Hello, my name is Mark Gibson, and you're listening to the podcast version of the Chagask Signpost series, a weekly webinar that promotes and examines sustainability in Irish farming. Good morning, and you're very welcome to this morning's Signpost webinar. This morning, we're looking at uh, nutrient management, and it's that time of year again when uh, our thoughts go to the, the requirements that we have for, for manag managing nutrients on the farm. And I suppose a number of years ago, it was about growing crops, but now increasingly, it's about getting the balance right between uh, effectively growing crops, but also making sure that the losses of nutrient to water and to air are, are minimized. So it, it has become quite complex. And I'm delighted to be joined this morning by uh, Patrick Foley, Podrick is a technologist at uh, Johnstown Castle, responsible for the development of, of NMP Online. Podrick, you're very welcome. Thanks very much, Pat. Um, great to be on this morning. Uh, I see you've got the nice warm background behind you just to Absolutely. remind us of what's outside. <laughs> yeah, it seemed appropriate. I, I had it on for Christmas, but it seemed appropriate to leave it on given the weather that's that's, that's out there. So maybe maybe next week I'll change it. <laughs> Hopefully. Uh, we're also joined by, by Carl Summers. Carl, you're very welcome. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for having me. You'll be helping us with questions uh, later on. So, yep. uh, uh, Parag, you're responsible for uh, the development of, of NMP Online, our toolkit to help farmers uh, manage their, their, their nutrients, but also to, to manage those losses. Um, and fairly significant task in terms of staying up with regulation, but also trying to use it to maximise communications with farmers. Absolutely, Pat. Um, look, I think my first slide will outline that I think NMP Online could be one of our best kept secrets. Um, the, it, it's a mammoth of a program. It's a, a huge piece of kit that delivers a hell of a lot more than what people realize. Um, and look, I'll outline that throughout the, the, the presentation. But I'd also highlight that I'm not the only one um, that's involved here. We've got Tim Hyde. Um, who does a hell of a lot of work on it. We're blessed that we've got a super analyst in Lisa Ring. Um, Leon Coe has recently just moved on to FRS, but Leon would have done a hell of a lot of work with NMP Online as well and would be well known through the help desk. Um, it's a program of work now. It's not just one piece of software and it, it delivers a lot uh, of work for people, but also delivers a lot of really um, sound advice and uh, legal documents, essentially, um, that are submitted to the Department of Agriculture um, so that farmers can... Uh, have and keep their derogation, I guess. Okay. Well, listen, I, without further ado, I get you to share your presentation. And uh, Parik, I think you're presenting for about 20, 25 minutes. And we're going, going to back that up with, we each year we do an analysis of the soil uh, results. So I'll be just giving us some of, some highlights of the, the information that we've got from soil analysis this year. So I'll do that when you're finished. Yeah, so I guess I'll I'll kick off um by just saying that uh, I joined Chagas about five minutes before the pandemic. So my first slide, I'm just going to hide behind the fact that um uh, I'm uh, almost new. So um I'll use the the fact that I'm new to Chagas to be to allow myself to say a couple of things that you mightn't say if you're in Chagas, um too long. Uh, I think uh, we take Chagas for granted in Ireland from the point of view of um somebody who, who's involved in doing a bit of farming and i've been lucky enough to travel a little bit around the world uh, in my career to date um outside of chagask and voice since i've joined chagask um and it's safe to say that uh we take it for granted it's it's a great organization it provides a hell of a lot of really useful advice for our farmers does a lot of research for farmers um in ireland we can often tend to look at things that uh, are not being done rather than what is being done and um, I guess I, I sometimes get the brunt of that being involved in NMP online because people can highlight what's not in it. Um, but when you take a look at what other people have around the world uh, to do, try and do a similar task, um, we're the envy of a lot of other European member states. And I know that because I've been lucky enough to present some of what I'm going to show today um, to other member states. And the amount of questions you get, the amount of envy you get um, is phenomenal. Um, even when you get as far as the green book and you get to talk about what it is, what it's uh, delivered, the amount of research that's in it, that, that is in it, the um, amount of knowledge that's in it, um, how often it's updated, how often it's published and people can't understand, um, uh, I suppose, how lucky Irish farmers are to have access to such um, agronomic advice that is continually updated by the team in Johnstown. 
Um, I say that NMP Online is is one of our best kept secrets because uh, it's not really part of the conversation at ground level and it should be. Um, it's often seen as a, a tool that just ticks a box for compliance and I guess I'll highlight that as we keep going. Um, but it's key to nutrient management and it's key to managing soil fertility at farm level. Um, it's one of our best KT tools that Chagas has um, and is a, an absolutely massive help in getting information out to farmers through the NMP online users um, and getting it into uh, documents and reports that are given to farmers to help plan their soil fertility program for the year ahead. Um, the changes that can be made quite quickly uh, at times within NMP online by changing an algorithm uh, to deliver new advice out to farmers because it goes directly out to users just makes it a, a, a brilliant tool. But that tool is pointless um, unless you've got the people behind it and the buy-in from the people behind it. And I, I guess what I mean by that is that we can have all these wonderful pieces of software, these wonderful tools, but if people aren't there to implement the advice at on the ground and you don't have buy-in from people on the ground, it's pointless. So you need the advisors on board and you need the farmers who are going to be making the changes at farm level, who are going to be, um, I suppose, ensuring that water quality is enhanced, ensuring that the environment um, is is benefiting from reduced inputs and um, that we're reducing emissions and so on. Um, those people are very, very important and are often, I won't say overlooked in the conversation, but are, are talked about as um, as not really part of the conversation, more so uh, an, an actor that just happens to be there rather than somebody that's the one that's made the difference. To me, they're the most important people in that chain. Um, and that chain consists of a, a hell of a lot of people. And NMP Online touches on all of those stakeholders. And I'm just going to give a little bit of an overview of the, the different people that it um, impacts on. Um, and to start with, I guess it all starts with research from um, an NMP perspective because the researchers are the ones that have developed the advice that goes into NMP online, the advice that's in the green book. Um, and when researchers think of NMP online, they think of data because researchers love data sets. Uh, they love generating reports. Um, and obviously that's part and parcel of their role. Um, but they also see a tool that is very useful at disseminating research. And I'll give an example of that. Um, I guess when the, the changes came to soil organic matter uh, um, for the advice around nitrogen and phosphorus, um, that soil organic matter advice would have meant that we're reducing the amount of N and reducing the amount of P that's been applied to soil organic matter. Um, and because uh, that hadn't been published yet, um, it meant that people knew nothing about it. But because we included an NMP online, it meant that it was being disseminated automatically to 850 users and the information was being pushed out to the multiple far thousands of farmers um, across the country before it was even published uh, in the mainstream media or in uh, mainstream research publications. Uh, so NMP online is a very rapid way of getting information out there. Um, if you ask someone in IT uh, what uh, NMP Online is about, they'll say it's about project management, they'll say it's about development, they'll say it's about resources because it can either be seen as a drain on resources or something that needs a hell of a lot of more resources in order to deliver more. It can be seen as something that needs a, a lot of budget because obviously um, development in today's world, today's world costs a lot of money. It takes a lot of investment um, and it's that kind of investment that delivers uh, for farmers at the end of the day. Um, but without the team in ICT, it won't happen. Um, if you ask an advisor what NMP online is about, uh, some of them will see work. Um, some of them see, they will see a communication tool. They'll see documentation. Um, obviously, uh, an external advisor will be working through Connected. Um, they'll see something that's easy to use, hopefully. And if it's not, uh, they often get in touch with us and we try and make it easier to use. They'll see webinars and they'll see bulletins because all of these things need to be updated in order to maintain, um, I guess, the knowledge to keep uh, on top of uh, all of the policy changes for their clients. Um, and then from a farmer's perspective, who is the end user really and is the client, um, they'll see compliance because uh, in an awful lot of instances, that's why a farmer approaches somebody to use NMP online and to put that nutrient management plan together. 
because compliance is something that's a requirement of farming in today's world. They might see a box ticked, uh, but some of them will see a tool and in that tool they'll see opportunity because there's an opportunity there to farm better, to produce more um, and to use, I suppose, the buzzword to produce more from less. Um, and that opportunity, I guess, they're all trying to run a business. Uh, they all deserve a standard of living from that business. And it makes common sense that if inputs can be reduced and um, the outputs can be increased, then there is an opportunity there. For someone from the Department of Ag, uh, look, they see compliance as well. They can see justification for for what they're um, asking farmers to do. Um, they see planning and recording, and they'll see uh, policy measures uh, being implemented at that level um, within NMP Online. Um, from a team member who's working on, on NMP Online, it's not a massive team, but it's a team that works quite well together. Uh, we'll see users and uh, farmers and clients and we'll see design and specifications and we'll see maintenance and a hell of a lot of testing because everything that goes in here, obviously these products are being used uh, to apply for a, a derogation uh, mainly at the minute. That's, I suppose, the, one of the number one or one of the most important uses. Um, so the testing has to be rigorous and has to be done in such a way that um, all of the scenarios that are run through it uh, can be, um, I suppose, truthed and make sure that the, it works as it should. We see speed, uh, data sharing agreements, that acronym that we all know and love, GDPR, um, training is a big part of it to make sure that what we've included in NMB Online is taken through to, to um, I suppose, to reflect um, exactly what it should be doing and to make sure that people have an understanding of it. Um, for example, at the minute, we've got probably up to 70 or 80 people in training every day this week in relation to um, derogation season, I guess, which is really kicking off in the next couple of weeks. Um, where a lot of the contract staff will have joined Chagask to help out with derogations um, and all of them will uh, benefit from some upskilling in that space. And that training needs to be provided um, in, in great detail to make sure that we deliver for all of the stakeholders that are involved. So I suppose that paints a picture of um, the various different stakeholders that are working across NMP online um, and that are benefiting uh, from it or maybe see it as a, um, a challenge to use um, to make sure that they deliver for their clients um, and the volume of clients that are being uh, touched upon by it has continued to grow, I guess, um, since its inception in, in 2016. Um, if you look at it since 2016, there's over 320,000 plans have been created within the system. Um, and that's, look, a, a lot of, um, I suppose, repeat plans uh, that have been created uh, across the system. In some instances, they're test plans where people will look at scenarios on the farm, so how they can increase stocking rate um, or how they can uh, change the system to be more efficient um, from a, a fertility perspective. Um, there's 850 users, 300 of them are Chagas based and 550 approximately uh, come from private consultancy. Um, Chagas assists with about 5,000 derogation clients in 2023, and that number will fluctuate. Uh, that's out of a total, I guess, of 7,200 derogation plans that were submitted last year. Uh, something similar will be done this year, and we're uh, just entering into that busy spell where those 850 users will work through those uh, plans. So since uh, the system was set up in 2016, We've had in the region of 65,000 farmers go through the system. So obviously that's touching a very high proportion of the farms across the country. Um, Gloss would have been a big driver back in 2016. And I suppose in the first 18 months of the system being set up, about 50,000 farms were uh, set up with a nutrient management plan. Um, obviously I've mentioned the derogation uh, farmers as well. And then there's an overlap uh, across those plans of around 18,000 farms uh, where people will be doing a nutrient management plan just purely to enhance their business and make sure that they're uh, farming as efficiently as possible. Um, obviously, we've a range of farmers, uh, tillage, beef, um, sheep, organic, um, right across the system. And all of them uh, need to be accounted for within the system. And I guess our mission statement within that is getting simple research based technical advice out to farmers to make better business and environmental decisions. And obviously, um, the environment is very important, but clearly the sustainability of any farm business and any family farm is of significant importance to make 
make sure that the farmers have a standard of living um, and can continue to do what we're um, doing on a, on a daily basis. Uh, but first, what is NMP Online? I'll go into a little bit more detail on that and how can it deliver on that mission, mission statement. The product is a project that's um, collaborative in nature, I guess. It's driven by Chagask, um, but it's open to private and public advisors, as I've already mentioned, supported by the Department of Agriculture. Um, and obviously it's used for agri-environmental schemes, will be used for acres. Uh, I've mentioned the irrigation plans already. The ASAP team also use it. Um, we have county councillors that use it, um, our county councils, should I say, that use it uh, for various different purposes. Um, so a lot of those stakeholders are probably tuned in this morning and um, keeping tabs on, on what we're, we're doing. Um, obviously, uh, being so important in the, the or being such an important link in the irrigation chain, um, we need to maintain the system and make sure that it's completely on top of all of the policy changes. And this is quite a difficult task because as you can imagine, as the changes keep coming, we need to change them for NMP online uh, to make sure the future plans are able to account for the, the necessary changes. Um, you also then have to make sure that the previous iterations of the system are still active for previous plan years. But just to give an example of some of the changes that we've made in recent times, um, or the, the mapping of the 220. Um, so obviously uh, it was very um, obvious in, in local and national media in recent times, the changes of the derogation from 250 back to 220, which will come into effect or has come into effect um, in this year. So we've had to overlay that map across the, the country so that when farmers are having plans done by their advisors, that it's quite clear that their farm or their holding is in the 220 area. If it is in 220 or if it's in 250, it's in 250. Now, it's one thing putting a map across it. You obviously also have to make the changes to allow the advisor to be able to um, let the system know that that farmer's um, max allowance is no longer 250, it's back to 220. So then the farmer will have to make changes within that. Um, cow banding is another example of that. Obviously, we've gone from 85 in recent years to 89. Then the 89 was increased to 92 and 106, depending on the um, production capacity of those cows. That has to be taken into consideration to allow advisors to, on the advice of their clients um, and possibly in, in, in consultancy with ICBF um, as to what the production levels of those cows are and to ensure that the farmer selects the right cow type so that their um, total nitrogen calculation is correct is correctly accounted for. Um, and all of these changes, again, need to be accounted for within NMP Online. Similarly, the reduction in max chemical allowance going back um, by 10% um, and now going back by a further 5%. So that's a 15% reduction in recent years. Um, and they incrementally have to be taken account of uh, within the system. Moving the spreading dates, another example, going from the 1st of October um, to the 8th of October. So the, the close period uh, needs to be accounted for there. Similarly, soils, uh, water. This year will be the first year that for the month of December, no soil water can be spread. So the system needs to account for that and ensure that the storage is accounted for within the system. Um, and these things can sound quite, quite simple, but obviously they all need to be spec'd out and developed and tested within the system. Uh, and it makes it more difficult when changes can come, such as the commonage going from 170 um, back to 50. Uh, in the third month of, of the year um, when it changed on the 11th of March, I think in 2022. So the system then had to change um, that calculation uh, a third of the way or a quarter of the way through the year to account for those changes and make sure that uh, plans that were being put together that had commonage as part of those plans um, were accounted for correctly. So that list goes on. That's just a snapshot of the changes that we make from a regulatory perspective. Um, and that will continue to change, uh, which is, I suppose, um, part and parcel of maintaining our derogation, which is something that we really need to work hard on doing. So I guess this slide gives an overview of how NMP Online actually works. Um, and if you look at the, the center of the screen, you'll see, I guess, what represents a, a software server or a hardware server um, that will do the calculations. But those calculations cannot be done unless um, the information is inserted correctly into the system. And this is where it goes back to people. Um, that piece of software in the center is absolutely useless unless we've got people to gather the information um, and then implement the information. And I'll, I'll keep making that point uh, throughout this presentation. The people are key to making this happen. 
Um, we've got soil analysis information. Obviously, the, the farmer needs to organise or the advisor needs to organise to have soil samples taken across the farm. Those soil samples um, must be below five hectares for derogation. But we'd always advise that those soil samples are taken in such a way that it represents the management unit of that farm. Um, and what I mean by that is that if five hectares goes beyond the ditch or beyond a, a, a paddock wire line or fence fence line, um, make sure and take the sample of the just what's within that wire because that's where slurry is spread. Someone can't spread at the other side of the wire, um, or at least they shouldn't be. Um, fertilizer isn't spread at the other side of the wire, so it's just that management unit. So you can't give advice unless the soil samples are taken correctly and inserted and mapped correctly within the system. And that mapping is key. Um, we're hopefully going to get updated LIPAS data from the Department of Agriculture in the coming weeks. Um, and that will further enhance and make advisors' lives easier when mapping a farm because they won't have to draw as much and they'll have LIPAS data that reflects what the Department of Agriculture are currently working with. Um, so the soil samples are mapped to the land area um, and that's the foundation of the nutrient management plan. Um, on top of that, then you've got the livestock numbers that are inputted into the system. This is all tied in with the client's information, but the livestock numbers are key to identifying um, how much uh, or what the stocking rate of that system is, how intensively the land is being farmed, the demand for the for the land, the um, output demand, whether um, uh, that's a, whatever kind of forage has been grown on the farm for those those animals. Um, obviously, storage facilities are taken into account then as well. Um, naturally enough, in today's uh, environment, we need to have additional storage to make sure we can keep animals in during bad weather and not spread during bad weather. And um, that farmers can do what they all know they want to do and get the best value out of the slurry and leave it in the tank until um, the grass is growing. Um, so storage is key and the system will highlight that a farm needs storage um, or that they have enough storage or whatever the, the situation is. But again, it depends on the information that's put in. Feed inputs are key to this as well, because obviously, as we all know, there's um, vitamins and minerals and nutrients in the feed that are brought into the system. And um, obviously, the animal doesn't retain all of them and they end up in the slurry. And that has to be taken account, account of in the system as well. Uh, naturally enough, then you can see that regulations are written into the system. I've outlined some of the changes, obviously, that have happened in recent times, but um, these changes go back to the early SIs or these uh, regulations go back to earlier SIs, some of which um, haven't changed since the inception of um, NMP Online. And naturally enough, then we have the Chagas Green Brook, which is really powering all of the um, agronomic advice that's in the system. Um, and the reality is that NMP Online began as an advisory tool. Uh, it came to fame, I guess, really um, as a compliance tool. And that's why uh, the Green Book is such an important part of it. Um, and I can't emphasize enough how lucky we are to have that information um, and uh, to, to have a computer system that based on soil samples, based on soil type um, and based on farming system can give varying advice um, and help advisors give that advice to farmers. Obviously, all of that information then together creates your nutrient management plan, um, which actually sounds quite simple when you put it together like that. But I can assure you that there's quite a complex uh, piece of work um, put together in, in the background to make it happen. Obviously, the conversation between the farmer and the advisor is is key in that to make sure that the advisor is given uh, accurate information and to make sure that um, the advisor has the opportunity, um, which often isn't the case because advisors are so busy, but um, to make sure the advisor has the opportunity to explain and go through in detail um, the advice that uh, can be given from the system because it can really enhance um, a farm business. Um, I've said it already, but I'll say it again. Uh, NMP Online began as advisory and it came to fame through compliance um, because I guess uh, it, it's seen now as something that can tick a box um, to make sure that uh, the job is done and the derogation plan is submitted. But the information that can be generated by it, and I'll go through some of that shortly, um, is invaluable to the farmer, really. Um, today, I guess we reckon that it can do a whole lot more uh, for um, the farming community uh, by helping enhance water quality 
uh, which is becoming more and more of a, a topic of conversation at farm level. People are paying more and more attention to it. Obviously, we're getting more intense rainfall uh, occurrences um, and it, it's something that we're going to have to get used to working with. Um, the last back end was very, very difficult to get slurry out. We've seen a number of extensions in the last back end. Um, Farmer manure, uh, same story. Um, and water quality is something that we we're going to have to work hard to um, improve in order to maintain our derogation in this country. It's quite a challenge, but um, tools using the advice that's within NMP online can help us get there. Emission reduction, obviously, it comes hand in hand and um, soil fertility uh, comes hand in hand with emission reduction. Um, both of those working together can reduce the inputs, obviously reducing emissions and getting the right product in the right time in the right place can enhance um, the soil fertility at that level. Um, all of that comes down to planning, which NMP can help us do, whether it's a, a, a lime plan or a fertilizer plan for the year. Um, and then obviously efficiency for advisors, that's us uh, being challenged with making the system as simple as we possibly can so that advisors' roles are made that little bit easier and they've got more time to um, do uh, what they love doing, and that's advising, um, rather than just uh, punching figures into a system. And all of this can help deliver change and can help generate more data, which can go back to the researchers, which I started talking about initially, um, to uh, allow the data tell the story of improvements on farm um, and so on. But the system will go nowhere, as I said before, unless we deliver for the people that are making the difference at ground level, and that's the farmer. So the system has to deliver for the farmer. Um, and one of the simple things, and these are just some quick examples of how it can do just that, but one of the simple things that they can do is um, to give an overview of the fertility level on the farm. Now, and I've purposely picked an example that shows uh, poor fertility on a farm because this is the overview um, of um, soil samples that are obviously attached to plots and you can see on the left hand side the overall soil fertility there is only just 97 percent of the farm that could benefit from better management and um, so three percent of the farm is in in a poor level for, of fertility and uh, i'll probably have to mention catherine keena now before i go say what i'm going to say next because catherine will text me and say um you can't tell everybody that they need to be in index three or index four but if somebody and, and they don't all need to be in that situ situation, you need to grow as much grass as you're able to use or that you need to use. Um, if your livestock, if you haven't got the stock on rate, you don't need more grass, then you no point in growing more grass. There's no point in reseeding and no point in wasting fertilizer unless you need the grass. Um, but if you are in a system that your stocking rate is high enough and um, that you can produce enough output on the farm to make your system and make your farm as viable as possible. Um, and that's your aim and that's what you're doing and within your business, then you need to make sure that your your fertility levels are a lot higher than what we're looking at on the screen at the minute. And um, you can see as you go across the page from left to right that the soil pH, there's only 11% of it actually at an optimum level. Um, 44% of it uh, nearly within the kind of reams of growing grass correctly and releasing nitrogen naturally from the soil. Um, so obviously that means that there's a, a high percentage of the farm that will benefit from having lime applied correctly to it. Um, then you see your phosphorus in index one with 45%, um, your potassium in index one, you have 35%. Now at a glance, a farmer can see they don't need to be a rocket scientist um, that this is something that they can work upon and, and improve upon and start with their lime and um, get their soil fertility built up. And I suppose that's key to NMP online is that the reports are used and the reports are made quite simple to look at. Um, and personally, uh, to me, uh, as, as someone that's involved in farming, um, you can see that the maps are something that you, you want to look at. And instantly when you look at a paddock um, that, isn't that nice lush green color you go yeah um that's been hit with slurry for far too often um there was a two-wheel drive tractor on the farm that was going down that road because it was easy and that's where the slurry went um all the way through the 90s all the way through the 90s and we need to change that now and get an umbilical system in and spread our slurry where it should go um rather than where it's easy to put it and obviously the farm will benefit from that um, I'm just going to fly through some of these slides because um, it's it's going to hammer home the same point. I think the maps are are where it's at, really. Um, so this is a lime requirement uh, for a farm. Um, obviously, if you look at a table like that and we all get bamboozled with, I suppose, academic looking tables. Um, a lot of us on the call will be used to looking at uh, a data sheet, but it's a lot easier to look at something like that. 
So you can clearly see, and this is a, a map that we would have put together just for, I suppose, explanatory purposes. Um, you can clearly see where the line is not needed there. Um, zero tons, zero tons just in front of the farmyard. Uh, nice, easy access. But you can clearly see on the outside that lime is needed. And the further field away on the, the far northern point of that map needs three tons of lime. The 100 needs three tons of lime. Um, and I suppose that's the beauty of having a soil sample um, taken at the right time, uh, attached to the right plot and graphically uh, illustrated for somebody to take a look at. I know it's obviously something very simple to do, but uh, having something paint a picture like that just makes it easier for people to grasp um, what the benefits are of having the lime applied there. Um, there's your pH uh, overlaid on it, but if you have a contractor come in um, and whether you're on farm or not, you can very easily leave that map out for them and they can see exactly where the line needs to go. It's very clear. Um, there's no uh, ambiguity around it. Um, from a P perspective, then you can see the soil samples overlaid again. Um, obviously, you can see your index on the left hand side here uh, of the table. So um, the map can be printed with the index highlighted on it or with the milligrams per litre on it as per on the right hand side here. But again, um, and I guess this is just for illustration purposes, you can see that the paddocks that are closest to the farmyard were being hit with slurry, obviously. Um, and as we got further away from the farmyard, it was probably that too little bit too far to travel or maybe what people have been doing is leaving the slurry in the tank until the weather gets bad and it's getting close to the deadline. And then you're not going to go and track the, the fields, driving across fields, destroying fields to spread slurry where it would actually be um, of more benefit. Um, and similarly, you can see the same story being told by the K-Map. Um, and these just make it easy for uh, an advisor to... Um, I suppose, take a look and uh, see what is best benefited uh, from um, applying in the right place. Um, and look, it allows for simple messages, um, where and how much and where to avoid if it's not required. And obviously that can tie in with a fertilizer plan as well. Um, but obviously we're, we're going to advise people to make the best value out of their organic manures and what they have on their farm, reduce their chemical inputs, um, only apply where it's needed, and that will help um, enhance the water quality. Um, and that's something that we've had a massive focus on in recent times. We've obviously um, strived, I suppose, to um, enhance NMP online and the map that we're looking on here now um, covers the same farm that we've had the previous examples on. And um, these are EPA sourced maps. In the past, people would have to kind of dip in and dip out of the EPA layers on the EPA website, um, but they've been overlaid on NMP online. So advisors can now do this work within NMP online. Um, and uh, it saves them. It just makes it easier that it's all done within one program. But what you can see here is that deeper color. Um, that's a, a, a rank one. That's your PIP N map in front of you. And this is a region which uh, would be quite susceptible to nitrogen leaching um, just due to the soil type and the location that the farm is based on. And that would obviously be um, emphasized to the farmer. Um, and it'll be emphasized in such a way that uh, the benefits will be highlighted to them and to the local waterways uh, by using protected urea, you spreading at the right time um, and making sure that they, I suppose, pay heed to um, all of the best practice advice that's out there. That same map then can also be worked for your PIP P map. Um, obviously still available within NMP online. Um, again, the darkest blue areas are your PIP1 rank. Um, and um, they are, are the higher risk uh, areas for diffuse P losses. Um, and again, they come from the EPA, but the, the benefit of having them within NMP online is significant. Um, and on top of that, we also have um, the various different maps that show the, uh, the flow of the water within those farms and on those lands. And you can highlight uh, to the farmers that are, that within the shoulders of the year that these are not fields that we'd be targeting with slurry um, or organic manure because there are uh, high risk areas of water flowing. You can see um, where that red X is, that um, is, is the area that we were looking at previously. Um, and um, you can see that the waterway will flow towards those points and they are areas of high risk. Um, and again, it's just to make it easier for the advisors to give good solid advice. But all of these need to be ground truthed by the advisor and the farmer to make sure that um, these are indicators 
but uh, generally very solid indicators that can highlight where these pollution risks um, are at. Um, look, it goes back to the key advice of getting the right fertilizer out at the right time um, and the right place. Um, and I guess this is part of our sustainable fertilizer plan within NMP Online that explained um, and uh, that the fertilizer application should match the growth curve. Um, the key is getting the lime right and uh, making sure that the advice then ties in and, and follows on from there. Obviously, from a compliance perspective, NMP Online plays a massive role within that. We're now in our fifth iteration of the nitrates action plan. Um, and all of the items here that I've uh, already discussed, I guess, are taken into consideration within NMP Online. Um, and I'm getting tight on time, so I'm just going to highlight that that will obviously lead to emissions reductions. Um, the application of organic matter or, or organic manure using less is going to be key on key to reducing the emissions. Um, getting the timing right, matching the grass growth curve. Uh, I've already mentioned targeting the plots and targeting the management areas. Um, farmers are moving more to protected urea. They're seeing the benefits of it. Obviously, with co-ops then um, giving uh, sustainability payments, uh, having protected urea as one of the items within uh, achieving those sustainability payments has a, a role to play in that as well, which is great to see. Um, but uh, making sure that we continue to encourage these things and including them in fertilizer plans is going to help get buy-in because um, that's where the difference is made at that, at that farm level. Um, improved soil fertility leading to optimal N efficiency, uh, getting your lime out, making sure that the N is, is readily available. Clover and multi-species forwards and the paddocks, obviously NMP online is... Um, that's probably something I should have included a great example of NMP online showing that the soil fertility is at an optimum level for uh, the app or for, for sowing clover and multi-species, because obviously your pH needs to be a little bit higher and um, your indexes should be up around three for P and K to make sure that your, your clover and your multi-species grow as they should or as they're capable of. Um, but key to all of this will be getting out of the envelope and into the farmer's hand. Um, and why I say that is because as I've mentioned, it, it came to fame through compliance. Um, we put the report in the envelope and people can see that as a box ticked. But those maps that I've just highlighted uh, for looking at your lime or your P and your K and making sure that your fertility is right across your plots um, is something that people will look at uh, on their phone. It's something that in uh, the future we should be able to give to not just your liming contractor, but if you've got a fertilizer coming in to spread fertilizer for you, that it's something that they should be able to take a look at your fertilizer plan for the year and say, OK, we're on um, split three. We're going to spread X, Y or Z um, by looking at the phone and making sure that everybody's aware of the plan that's there. Everybody's aware of um, what fertilizer is to be spread um, and that uh, they're not spreading any more than what's needed. And um, as we get better at managing clover and swords, um, that we ensure that uh, we we um, reduce our fertilizer application. And that can be done with the help of a tool like this. Uh, but I'm just going to highlight again that the tool is useless unless the people uh, that are on the ground and that are making the changes are supported um, and are listened to and are helped um, and that they're actually looking at the advice that they're giving um, and feeding in the right data to get the best advice back out um, because we can't take uh, NMP online for granted, the green book for granted, but we certainly can't take the people that are working day in and day out um, on the ground, making sure that they're improving their water quality, making sure that they keep their derogation and making sure that they have a livelihood um, out of what they do on a daily basis. And so to do the next generation, um, it's, it's all down to the people. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Pat. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so I'll just, uh, if it's okay, I'll just continue. There's just a few, uh, or a quick, a very quick update of some of the the data that's come in each year. We do an analysis. One of the first jobs we do in the year is is do an analysis of the previous year's data. So I'm just going to share a couple of insights from that, if that's okay. So just a couple of quick highlights from from 2023, from 2023, and a few things to to watch out for uh, uh, for 2024 from the analysis of the soil results that we get in, and it is a key, I suppose, guide to us as to what we need to be doing on an ongoing basis. So just uh, I suppose on the um, 
numbers of soil samples. We've had a huge increase in 2023 in the number of soil samples. Predominantly, it's it's uh, statutory and related to to schemes. So we've gone from uh, just under 40,000. Generally, numbers generally are in the the 30 to 40,000 to 75,000. So almost a doubling of the the uh, numbers. Interestingly, if you look at it on a breakdown by enterprise, slight increase in the number of, of dairy samples, but a huge increase in the number of samples coming from uh, the, the, the dry stock sector. Again, driven by uh, uh, regulation and requirements for schemes. And that uh, we need to be really careful when we're drawing conclusions from the data, uh, it, particularly in relation to this, because we have a very different cohort of, of uh, farmers in uh, taking soil samples in 2022 with no reg with no uh, regulatory requirement. And an awful lot of farmers are are doing it for pure agronomic purposes, whereas a, a different cohort here. So we need to be just careful in terms of drawing conclusions. On the tillage side, again, increases there with, with uh, increased numbers of farmers required to take samples uh, for regulatory purposes. So just to look at the, the, the some of the trends overall, when we look at soil pH, it shows uh, 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 improvements in, in soil pH, uh, uh, an indication that in the last year that that's gone down, but that's probably need to be really careful about that because uh, that's again, potentially reflective of the number of, of uh, farms on in the lower uh, uh, are, are in the more extensive group who are who are um, uh, getting samples taken so if we break that down we can see on the dairy side and and sorry just one of the things i just highlight uh, in terms of looking at these graphs we're looking at a continuum from uh, i suppose low fertility at the, at the bottom or low ph in this case at the, at the bottom up through a higher and higher levels as, as per the legend here. So the generally is a, a, what we tend to do is track a, a cutoff point. And in this case, we're tracking our cutoff at about 6.2, which is uh, the, the, the kind of level that you're looking at for a uh, um, reasonable level for agronomic uh, purposes. So uh, in the dairy, on looking at it on the dairy side, we see it's it's been reasonably static uh, for, for quite a while now. Uh, I suppose the expectation is over the next number of years, given the amount of lime that's gone out, that that will, will start to improve because we still have 50 percent of dairy land, uh, which is below optimum uh, uh, for um, uh, grass growth. And in particular, as, as Parik alluded to, when we're looking at where we need to be for, for clover production, which is a, a key element of, of our, our objectives to reduce nitrogen use and reduce nitrogen losses, we need to be up in this space. So we, are, we have, I suppose, in, from a pH perspective, uh, in or around 30% of the land suitable uh, for, for growing uh, clover crops. In terms of the uh, pH levels on dry stock, they, the numbers at optimal are way lower. So a huge amount of work to be done. Again, this apparent decline is more about the difference in samples, I think, than, than, the, uh, the, than an actual decline. Moving on, uh, uh, so, and, and again, as Parik alluded to, there's a lot of farmers now in this space who are farming extensively. And the requirement there, where you're farming extensively and trying to have a high degree of, of diversity in your in your swards for uh, for nature purposes, you don't need to. You're not aiming to be up here. You're aiming pretty pretty much to be down here at at, at the lower level. So it's key that the the information is it, that farmers get is suitable for them and and guides them where they need to be for for their objectives. In terms of tillage. Uh, consistently see the the pH levels on on tillage farms is is kept very very high, uh, um, and you probably find that a, a lot of the ones in this lower area are actually on rented land. Uh, so this the, the the performance of of tillage farms in terms of soil fertility it tends to be really really good. Looking very quickly at at some of the p indexes uh, across all farms here. We're again seeing a situation where about a uh, little over 50% of farms are at index uh, uh, three and four uh, and 45% uh, uh, below that. Breaking it down into uh, the, the enterprises, again, looking at it, about 
55% uh, of, of dairy farms with an index three or four, uh, uh, but a very substantial number where most of these farms are aiming towards uh, high productivity, very high proportion, 45% in, in this lower. Uh, the amount of index ones has, has reduced. So we've been seeing uh, improvement there, but the fear is that given two years of low levels of use of P, uh, that we we uh, are going to potentially see drops there. Uh, dry stock is not that dis uh, dissimilar. Uh, and again, making the point that in some cases, we don't want high levels of P if we're trying to have uh, biodiverse swords. Uh, in, in tillage, the while, while the levels of P, of, of P uh, the pH levels of tillage were very high, there's not that much difference in terms of P. And uh, I suppose this reflects a, a very significant amount of, of rented land in P. And while it doesn't cost an awful lot to, to bring up uh, pH to required levels, it is a very substantial investment to, to bring P levels up to index three and four. Uh, and and uh, tillage farmers a lot of the time feed the crop, but don't feed to increase that levels because of the costs associated with it. Uh, again, just to, to make a point, there can be uh, uh, regional variations. And, uh, and just a couple of points out of this, I'm just looking at dairy farms in, in Kilkenny here, and we've seen a very significant uh, increase in the in the P levels or an improvement in the P levels uh, in, in Kilkenny. But one of the worrying factors, and, and there's a, a, when we look at all of these graphs related to P, our objective is to try to get optimal P, which is in, in index three, but we don't seem to be able to manage to get anything over 25%. It's stubbornly at 25% regardless. And what's happening here is we're getting a very significant shift into index four, which is, is too high a level and, and is environmentally dangerous. So in, in that area, uh, it looks as if we need to take a little bit of, of more caution in terms of the spreading of, of the nutrient into uh, uh, the areas that need it and avoiding it in, in other areas. And again, there can be quite different, big differences county to county. We see here a much lower uh, levels of P and Wexford, two counties that you would probably expect to be reasonably similar. Uh, just finally, the information park went through it. Really important to be able to see at a glance the, the um, uh, 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 nutrient level on individual farms, and again, tying that with spatial data, where again, you're seeing these out uh, further away from the farmyard, which in this case is here, you're seeing lower levels of, of nutrient uh, applied, uh, leading to reduced levels of, of uh, uh, soil fertility. So a lot of messaging can be got very easily from a combination of the overall data that we have, but then applying it at that specific farm level. So thanks very much, sorry, no. Okay, uh, so uh, uh, just to um, remind you, if you have any questions, uh, uh, particularly for Pari, you might put them into the uh, Q&A. Carl, a number of questions coming in there now. Yeah, some excellent questions coming in there, Pat. So um, Pari will hit you very hard with you now. Um, I suppose, first of all, you have lots of advisors now coming into a very busy, busy period as regards derogations coming up, so they're going to be flat out using the system. Can you, you mentioned the origins of where, where the system arise. Can you... Can you give us a bit more detail on that and maybe what benefits uh, are the change to the system brought to the table? Yeah, I guess I see one comment there in particular, Cahill. Um, I was just scanning through the questions uh, as Pat was speaking. Um, some people preferred the older system, which was there pre-2016, which is understandable. It was quite simplistic based on an Excel that Stan Lawler had put together. Um, and look, it was super, really fit for purpose, did what it needed to do. Um, I guess the requirements would have changed over the years and have gotten more complex. And that's why the complexity of the system has um, grown. Um, it's not something that we in Chagask have uh, tried to do. It's something that has happened as a result of policy changes, um, as a result of requirements changing. Um, and we're trying to stay on top of it with uh, the help of our ICT team and with the help of our contractors to, to do that. Um, and look, we'll have to continue to change with it and try and make it as simple as we possibly can um, to make sure that users are there. But I suppose as Pat showed, the, the visual maps that are available from it, the key is getting the information out to the farmers. Um, I, I suppose in one sense, uh, the users are the advisors and our professionals and 
should be used to using ICT systems and should be used to using PCs and are generally very capable of doing so. Um, but pushing that information out to farmers in nice and easy to use, easy to understand um, maps and uh, outputs is key. Yeah, any tips for advisors when it gets really busy on using the system? Um, make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're ready. Make sure that um, you've got your BIS maps ready and anything that you need to 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 work across ready. Make sure that you have a conversation with your your client and um, that you know that they've if they were supposed to spread lime last year that they have actually spread it. Um, for the lime uh, requirements, make sure and take some advisor notes in there because uh, NMP looks forward. It's a planning tool. Um, so it's not necessarily uh, until you get to do your records at the end of the or to start of the following year for the previous year. That's when uh, it can get tricky. And that's when a conversation with your your um, client uh, is, is important. And generally speaking, people have so many clients, they're not going to remember every conversation. So use your advisory notes um, as you're putting the plan together. Um, Lime is a great example of that. Uh, take a note on what lime was supposed to be spread in 2023 and ask your farmer if it was spread, because if they're supposed to spread 25% of their lime in year one of their derogation, um, it's supposed to be done, simple as that. So uh, you will need to have a record to be able to ask those questions to make sure and get it right. Yeah, we mentioned derogation, I suppose, and, and you do a lot of NMP derogation farmers, but um, one of the comments here is NMP is probably, I suppose, attending one aspect of farming. I know you mentioned index trees versus index twos, but uh, and it's kind of aimed, maybe the suggestion here is that production based as efficiently as possible, but should it be more focused on kind of habitat focused NMP or a, like a low input system option, maybe? Look, that's where it's going to get to, Carl. Um, I think there was another question in there around putting it, putting in buffer zones. Um, they can be marked. There's a little bit of work in marking them uh, on the system at the minute to mark a buffer zone. But the aim is to get to that space where those buffer zones can be can be highlighted on it. You can see um, currently if you've got farm roadways, you can see how water can flow, where the water would end up or is likely to end up in the system. And the aim is that um, we'd be able to mark off all of those habitats, mark off within acres when you're putting your acres plan together that the buffer zones would be clearly highlighted, that um, it just makes it easier for the farmer and easier for a contractor that's coming in to know where they're not supposed to go or where um, is the more extensive uh, land on the farm that's not supposed to be getting slurry or not supposed to be getting the, the chemical fertilizer that we're used to applying, I suppose. Yeah, and on that, I... on that point, Carl, uh, increasingly, I suppose we're uh, looking at uh, results-based um, sch uh, schemes in, in acres where areas that are, uh, uh, I suppose, being focused on biodiversity uh, within the farm, we're trying to, to make sure that, that they improve in terms of, of achieving that outcome. And having a low nutrient uh, level uh, in those areas is, is one of the key aspects to, to, to achieving that. And insofar as we use NMP predominantly in the past to just indicate, are we at the, the right level of, of uh, uh, nutrient uh, for production, we can use it for the, the, exactly the same purpose to try and make sure that we're in those areas where we're targeting a high biodiversity that we are at the, the appropriate and low levels of, of nutrient as well. So we probably haven't done enough to use it for that purpose, but the capability is there. Yeah, and a couple of questions around acres as well. So this might be for both of you actually. Um, so there's a little bit of confusion around acres. So the department have requested, uh, I suppose, farmers to do a mandatory soil sampling, um, but they haven't said that there needs to be a nutrient management plan is that the plan for 2024? Will each of those farmers have to have an NMP plan? Uh, no, uh, the our understanding is that that it's it's uh, not a requirement. Uh, there's, I suppose, a couple of things happening this year. Uh, the introduction of the and there's a couple of questions in relation to that the introduction of the fertilizer register is putting a little bit more pressure on people to make sure that that things are are right because there's a lot more information there uh, as well. And that's, uh, I suppose. Uh, pointing to towards farmers doing a, a good job with, with nutrient management planning. The fact that they have the soil samples there, it really makes sense to do a nutrient management plan uh, to take advantage of that and to, and to effectively run, run things a little bit better. And we're still 
potentially going to have regulation coming from Europe, which is going to force significantly, significantly more farmers to have nutrient management plan, but we don't know exactly where that's at at the moment, unless you've had an update on that product recently. No, I just say that this, when you have soil samples like that, um, if, you should just go ahead and do a nutrient management. It's a missed opportunity to, to not do it um, and to just get a feel for how the farm is doing. Like getting those uh, maps put together is just a super help to to be able to manage the farm and manage um, growth on the farm. Simple as that. It, they won't do much job for you when they're stuck in a drawer somewhere, so better have them on a plan. Absolutely. Um, a question, I suppose, or uh, around actually one of the one of the advisors came back and said that it'd be very interesting having those the uh, nutrient management and the pH and the P and K uh, maps at this time that they could give out to the farmers. Any comments on that? Well, I suppose as regards planning at the start of the year. Which look, I, I suppose the ideal thing is to have them ready. Um, if the soil samples are there and the the soil season starts from the fifteenth of September, um, when the chemical fertilizer uh spreading date closes so soil samples can be taken um and the maps can be put together in advance of having the bis um look it's an ideal time of year i suppose to have them in the farmer's hand before they even earlier than that before they start planning silage season um and make sure that they're ready to grow as much grass as they can if they're doing any spring reseeding that they have the information there as well um, and that soil samples are taken in advance of reseeding um so yeah it's it's up to the farmer and the advisor to make sure that they have them but uh, it'd be super to get them in an envelope with your bis maps as well um, and and have them ready but where we need to get to call is having them on your phone that a farmer can pick up their mobile phone and sitting at the fire in the evening if they want to make a plan for for the week ahead or the year ahead they can by just scrolling through it and getting a feel for like everyone loves, loves looking at their their land they love looking at their own information um and it's great to have it and have such free access to it so we need to get an nmp mobile out there and get it into people's hands and into their pockets and I be think, part I of the conversation one, one thing on that part is, is some people think because they, they look very good, uh, that there's a lot of work in terms of getting those maps. In fact, once you have the data, the soil samples into the system, producing both the the uh, profile of the farm with those uh, pie charts and producing the maps can be really fast. It's it's Once once the, the base data is there, you're talking about a couple of minutes. So some people kind of think that there's an awful lot involved in it, when in fact there isn't. Can, can a farmer access that? Uh, themselves that data or do we have to rely on the visors to take it down there are there is a, a trial has been run um, look it's quite a complex system as per some of the comments in there um, and uh, level 8 is generally required to have access to it we have run a, a pilot scheme where um, farmers who have level 8 have access to it but in, in the main no is the answer um, there are more farmers requiring it or requesting it uh, because obviously more and more farmers are, are taking soil fertility and um, water quality more and more seriously um, so it's something we will have to look at but uh, in my own personal view on it is it needs to be accessible on a mobile phone for a farmer to make decisions when they're in a yard or uh, they're going to the co-op to buy fertilizer that their shopping list is there ready for them um, and that the year's planning is done in advance and the, the work and drudgery and I suppose there's an element of risk to it now as well with fertilizer register and um, the risk is that you might buy the wrong product or might buy too much of it and um, so we, we need to make it as simple as possible for people to comply yeah there's a question here around can non-farmers uh, access nmp if to farm and that's that's a no that's a no um yeah. but what i would say is those non-farmers can go onto the epa website and they can look at the pip n and pip p maps those maps are all available um on the epa website as well um, the reason we put them into NMP online is to try and make it easier for advisors to access the information. Yeah, really good suggestion here as well. Um, somebody's asking, is there potential for the information in NMP to link up to some form of a GPS system where a farmer or contractor would have all that information loaded into the system where it would make it much more efficient? That's sure to someone reading my mind. Um, in an ideal world, it'd be absolutely super to be able to have uh, your contractor rock down your driveway um, take a look at your NMP, link into the GPS system, drive into the shed, know what field cows have come off, um, know what the rotation is on the farm, um, linked to Pasture Base Ireland, um, know what the growth rates are, 
be able to spread what's supposed to go out on that um, plot for the next rotation, uh, knock it off the list as spread market has done. Um, similarly, when uh, dairy washings need to go out, that that is recorded um, and they know where it's supposed to go. Similarly, when slurry is supposed to be spread, that they know where it's supposed to go. Um, and that at the end of the year, you can look at your Pasture Base Ireland uh, growth rates and see what gra- how much grass you grew, how much um, minerals or nutrients you spread on that field, the results you get, got, the progress you're making, compare that to the year before um, and similarly look in on uh, catchments.ie and look at a water quality hopefully is improving across your district um, and that's I suppose tied in with the asset program and and all the great work that's been done and um, that's how you look at progress isn't it measure it, it's on the radar then hope so which is good news um, we're going to have to, to 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 bring it to a halt where we're at uh, uh, slightly over time uh, but I suppose there's just a, a couple of, of, of final comments and as we're in a year We've, we've had a huge amount of, I suppose, of, of change over the last couple of years. Um, uh, some of it enforced by, by crisis where the levels of, of nitrogen use has uh, dropped dramatically. Um, and uh, I suppose part of the reaction to that was a, a real concentration of getting uh, value out of uh, uh, the, the slurries that are, are going out on farms to try and make sure we, we're getting a, a better use of them. But I think one of the, the consequences that we need to be careful around is with the, uh, I suppose, shift in product to a, a protected urea and with the reduction in the amount of nitrogen, we need to be really careful because I suppose farmers a lot of the time have a pattern of use. They use a particular uh, product. And if you're using a lot less uh, uh, nitrogen, what's happened over the last couple of years uh, has been a, a real reduction in the in the use of P and K. And if the with the product mix people have, if they keep that the same, that's that's inevitably going to happen, and we're going to see a, a drop in in soil fertility. I think people really need to take a look at the mix of products they're they're using, and in particular to bring in some more high P high K uh, products into the mix to make sure that that we can over the next few years, maintain uh, uh, that soil fertility, which is absolutely key to allowing us to, to maintain the reduction in, in nitrogen use. So it's, it's a good time and it's a good year to really have a good look at, at what you're doing on, on soil fertility. Okay, listen, I think we better finish it there. Uh, thanks, Parik, uh, for, for that. Thanks, Carl, for, for the assistance. Uh, next week, uh, we'll have Catherine Keener, uh, I've had the, 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 the privilege of seeing Catherine Keener doing a, a presentation on hedgerow establishment and hedgerow management, uh, uh, and it's, uh, she does a really good job on it. So next week, a huge number of farmers as part of Acres are, are putting in uh, hedgerows and some as, far, as part of eco schemes as well. So if you want to get, uh, I suppose, the best advice in terms of, of uh, getting your hedgerows established, and the early management of those hedgerows for whatever purpose you, you want them. Uh, uh, come along next week and, and Catherine will be, will be presenting. So until next week, thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you next week. You've been listening to the podcast version of the Chagisk Signpost series, the weekly webinar that promotes and examines sustainability in Irish farming. Don't forget to join us live every Friday morning for our latest webinar. For more, visit chagisk.ie. And you can also rate, review, and subscribe to the Signpost series on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. I'm Mark Gibson, and thanks for listening.